flown just about everything with wings. The F-86 Sabre jet, the F-100 Super Sabre, and even the old P-51 Mustang. There's the Shrike, Bob's newest love. On the takeoff, Bob will retract his wheels to get airborne. And then, at 130 miles an hour, he'll execute a barrel roll. Most airplanes at very low airspeeds has a tendency to dish out, which means the last portion of the roll, the nose drops rather abruptly if you're at very low airspeed. Throughout the years, an awful lot of pilots and demonstrations have lost their or at least crashed their airplanes as a result of not pulling the nose up high enough before starting this particular maneuver. Those side slips are done at 120 miles an hour. Now this particular side slip maneuver is, is a bit tricky in that it is a cross control maneuver and one that is normally only seen in fighters. And as a matter of fact, there are very few fighters that have the control ability to be able to go out to these side slip angles that can be controlled at as low an airspeed as this particular airplane. I'm a pretty busy fellow while I'm doing these maneuvers. Each and every flight that I perform, I have a challenge to try and perform a little bit more precisely than on the last flight. So I'm challenging myself each time to do a little better so it's total concentration. These one-wheel landings are actually pretty easy. I think most anyone can land on one wheel. As a matter of fact, I find it difficult now to land on two. I've made so many thousands of one-wheel landings. Often people ask, what about the side loads on the landing gear? If you were riding with me, most of them would be pretty gentle touchdowns. Every now and then I'm displeased with how abruptly I do touchdown, but generally speaking, they're pretty smooth landings. And in this particular airplane, the landing gear is designed for double the weight of this particular airplane. As you come in on this maneuver, which is to be a touchdown, we kiss the right wheel on the runway, now, I'm pulling up, rolling the airplane at a very low airspeed, and then easing it back down to the runway and touching down on the left wheel. Now, Bob will do an eight-point roll at 250 miles an hour. My hand movements as I go into this eight-point roll, they're rather abrupt and that's in order to get the precise elements of the roll. Just imagine cutting a pie turned up on its side in eight slices and having each slice equal. I'm just as normal as anyone else. When I first started aerobatics, I had great difficulty with nausea, and it was a matter of total concentration to overcome it, and it took some doing. We start in at about 250 miles an hour, and here's the critical part. You're pointed toward the ground. There are no instruments, no way of knowing where to pull out other than your good judgment. And when these loops are executed off the deck, there can be no mistakes. Here comes a dead engine eight-point roll at 250 miles an hour. Bob will roll into the dead engine instead of away from it. He's the only pilot we know who can do this maneuver. As you roll into the dead engine, you have an asymmetric power, which means that the engine on the one side is pulling, and on the other side, you have no power at all. So that's a drag factor. And so it wants to pull the airplane around toward the dead engine side. But if you have adequate airspeed, there's certainly no problem in controlling the airplane. All pilots are taught to never turn into the dead engine. But if the airplane has the right kind of flying qualities and you hold the right airspeed, you're safe turning into the dead engine, though it's still not recommended even by me. There's a loop with one engine shut down. An airplane only recognizes airspeed as far as its flying qualities are concerned. Most people are most concerned when they have an engine failure. There isn't any reason to really be concerned about losing an engine unless you have a very low airspeed, because that's the only thing the airplane recognizes. 
If you have a lot of airspeed or an adequate airspeed, the airplane's just as maneuverable, just as controllable as with both engines running. And so in this particular case, I'm demonstrating the same preciseness of handling qualities with one engine out. He's shut off both engines. Bob is going to try an eight-point roll with both engines shut down. Here he goes. That beeping sound is Bob's stall alarm. When it goes off, Bob must react quickly. For all dead stick maneuvers, you have to start from enough altitude to convert your altitude into another form of energy, which is airspeed. The only thing in this particular case that you have to worry about is having enough speed on entry to complete the maneuver and then be positioned to land in the event you might not be able for some unknown reason to start the engines. Up to this point, we thought we'd seen some pretty spectacular flying, but Bob isn't through yet. For his finale, he shut down both engines and put it all together. We're building up the airspeed. Here we go, the engines go off. We're pulling up now, leading off airspeed as we pull up and over the top, holding three Gs in this particular maneuver, bending it right on around, absolutely quiet and still here on the top. Diving back down once more, 110, 115, 120, 150, 180. Building up airspeed, there we are, back up to our 200. Trees coming up at us, pulling up and rolling. Looks like a well-planned maneuver. We're going to end up right where we wish to be, out of a 360-degree barrel roll. Got the airspeed right where we wanted it's pegged. Good. Looks good all the way. Looks like we got a good one right on around and into the land. 30 miles an hour at this point. Dropping the nose again, killing off the airspeed, pushing it right on down, and here we go. Just perfect. Right off and in the grass. We'll land in the grass this time, or right on the edge of this runway. Got it, just a little kiss there. Bob Hoover, executive, test pilot, and thrill seeker. Thank you.